Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Hey guys, welcome <laughs> back. <laughs> I'm just excited. Woo! <laughs> That was the most insane thing I've ever seen you do, and I loved every second of it. <laughs> Anyways, gonna try to get through this video. Hey, I cut myself. You did? Yeah. Where? Bad? Mm. Bad? I'm gonna be okay. Well, you're a mess over there. How did you cut yourself? Look at this mole. Babe, <laughs> you went to practice and came back insane. Yeah. What is one thing you like least about your social media job? How I push through. I feel like over the years, it, this has changed. Like my answer for this every year has probably changed. I would say now in my life, a few things that can be difficult. One, I'm kind of like always on. My job is kind of 24 hours. There's no real work life separation. So it's kind of just like a constant stream of sharing and posting and um, when I'm not sharing and posting planning my content for the months to come planning my ads planning my own brand stuff so I guess that I just like never really feel off the no work life separation thing and like with that there's some days that I like don't always want to share um, and that I don't really feel like being seen or like having to share anything I do because it's my job and because actually Whenever I feel that way in the morning and then I end up sharing or creating content, I usually end up like feeling better about my day and I, how I, I push feel like through. you're good at separating. Like you, you actually don't take long to make your your content unless it's like a YouTube video. Like it's not like we're like stopping and like doing a whole ass photo shoot. Like I feel like you like keep it make on the it go. really quick and it just Yeah. Makes it really quick and easy. I think maybe like a year and a half ago, I would say my hardest part the hardest part of my job was trying to find the balance of privacy and sharing. Um, and then with that, um, listening to and reading negative things about myself that are being said and false narratives and rumors and those things, um, that's not really a problem for me anymore. I don't really get hate on my platforms besides on TikTok. On Instagram, when I block someone, it blocks all of their accounts and then they, they can't make another account to comment. So I actually get like zero hate on Instagram. I also know that like the same people, the same like handful of people are hating on me because they're not, they're not able to comment on my Instagram anymore. But TikTok doesn't have that feature anymore. So I get some like crazy out of pocket um comments on my tiktok i'm just like burner accounts and that doesn't honestly upset me sometimes it like pisses me off when people are like trying to like cancel me or just like say crazy things about me crazy rumors about me so the comments don't really bother me anymore i feel like once you've heard everything and you've been like bullied online for so long like you actually become numb to it like i'll get comments and i'm like that's all you got i don't know I also think the older I've gotten and the more good I've gotten with myself, the less that that has been an issue. I also feel like I'm not insecure anymore about my relationships and about really, obviously I have like my own personal insecurities, but like I'm just like not as insecure of a person and I'm not as reactive of a person and I'm just like grown up. Most fulfilling thing in your life right now. I would say there are multiple things that are really fulfilling in my life. Like there's not really one specific thing that's super fulfilling. I would say like I'm really proud of where I've come like personally, my own mental health and balancing that with my work. Honestly, like the small things in my life give me a lot of fulfillment. Like I really love to cook. I love my horse. I love my boyfriend, you know, working on my brand. I don't have one thing that gives me fulfillment. What do you feel like your purpose is? I do feel like I'm supposed to be doing what I'm doing, like making content and stuff, just cause like I've naturally done that pretty much my whole life, whether it was like making videos or taking photos with my friends. I've always been like a very visually creative person. I think that if I wasn't doing this, I would be working like brand strategy or creative strategy advertising for the brand side. So I really do feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, but in general, I do feel like my purpose is to like, be a mom like in the grand scheme of things in life is being a mom and being a good partner and being successful and my purpose like my job i do feel like i'm doing what i'm supposed to be doing am i in any credit card debt no 
What's my fitness background? I was a ski racer, which a lot of you know. I don't want to be really repetitive with people who've been following me on YouTube for like four years, but I was a ski racer. Without getting into like the whole skiing story, I had to work out like two times a day when I was ski racing and I was ski racing my whole life. So I like just worked out and trained a lot when I was younger. And I feel like I always had like an athletic build. Um, so that's my fitness background. I used to actually work out like quite a bit after I quit ski racing. I used to do Pilates a lot in New York and like just I did a lot more like workout stuff um, and went to Soul Cycle a lot. Occasionally I'll maybe do like a YouTube ab workout for me personally in my body and this is like completely what this works for me. It's like really more about what I eat. I don't really like limit myself to anything. Like I eat everything. I feel like saying being in a calorie deficit like triggers some people, but I do find that to be like the most effective. I'm not like on a crazy calorie counting regimen, but like I'm definitely aware of what is going in my body and how much I'm eating. I found that when I've gained weight, for example, uh, this time last year in LA, I was the same size I am now and then after I left LA I'd gained like 15 10 pounds and I was eating really good food I was eating at Erewhon almost every day I was eating really nutritious food but I was eating just like a lot of food and I was consuming a lot more calories than I had previously and it wasn't like I was eating unhealthy at all I was eating like very healthy but I was just like consuming more calories and at the end of the day it didn't matter how healthy I was eating I was just eating too much food for my body and that caused me to gain like 15 pounds so now i just like don't really restrict myself i'm just aware of how much i am eating and how much my body actually needs i would say it's like intuitive eating but i also like kind of hate that i also like don't do high impact workouts anymore I, for me personally high impact workouts just like don't work for me i feel like it makes me bigger and puffier and more bloated and it's like not good for me i feel like i actually like gain weight when i do high impact workouts what's your approach to dating where and how to find people you're compatible with so i can't deny that my social media has definitely helped me meet people and date people it's like an online dating app like instagram is the biggest dating app in the world it really is so yeah i feel like for me putting myself in social situations going to places that i love bars that i love like when i would go out going out to places that i would like like you're gonna attract people who like similar things to you for me i hate clubs and nightclubs um and anything of that sort so like i know that i'm not gonna meet like my soulmate in a nightclub I feel like putting yourself out there is really important also ask around ask friends for like like ask to get introduced how did you like Nashville? I liked Nashville. I honestly like didn't really see a lot of Nashville. I saw like a very certain side of Nashville and like honestly never spent time on Broadway at all. Never really spent time downtown, but I did like it. It's a really nice place, really beautiful. I definitely like am glad that I left Nashville and like got out of there. It was cool to see. I definitely want to go back and do it like on my own terms. But when I was living there, I did drive my car there. So I had to drive it to Nashville. And then when I left, I had to like drive it all the way back. Crazy drive. I just like got in the car and was like, how to deal with mean girls. Just don't deal with them. Uh. I honestly don't have drama in my life anymore and I don't deal with mean girls and the only like mean girls in my life are like trolls online but I dealt with a lot of mean girls when I was living in Toronto especially from girls who like didn't know me but they're like real people they're not internet trolls it was just like girls being actually just really fucking mean and I would like react and like try to deal with it and I feel like that actually ended up like hurting me a lot more so just like don't deal with that hints on new Dairy Boy products as some of you guys probably know I am in the process of making denim probably one of the hardest things to make in the fashion space and i've like found that out through doing it but i'm really excited and it's a work in process and we're sampling denim and hopefully you guys will see it soon but coming soon i am launching candles uh i'm launching a dairy boy candle and I'm really excited about that. So you guys will see that soon. Do you hang out with other girls on tour? Yeah, I do hang out with girls on the tour. We're definitely all here for our boyfriends and it's like not really like a social thing. I think we're really here. I'm here to support Tommy and like get my work done and explore um, wherever it is we are. 
that week it is really nice to have girls to hang out with and explore with especially because some of the other girlfriends are content creators so that is really nice are you ever insecure in your relationship um, i have a really good amazing boyfriend so that's definitely really helpful i've definitely been insecure in my past relationships just because they did things that made me insecure and they acted in ways that didn't make me feel comfortable and for me um so i had been through like a few kind of bad relationships and moving forward and like how i feel like i not like found tommy but like wanted to date him is because i knew that we were on the same page and i really don't feel insecure in my relationship but i also feel like that has to do a lot with me and like the work that i've done on myself over the years and having my own job and having my own source of income and my own identity where us being together is just like adding to our lives it's not you know anything but that like my schedule and my life now revolves a lot around him but i really do have my own thing and my own passions and stuff that i prioritize so i feel like i wanted to elaborate on this a little bit just as i was editing i feel like i didn't talk about enough how i have been in relationships where the men that i've been have tried to like stifle me in a way and didn't want me to whether it was like reach my full potential or fully succeed because they were insecure and they were intimidated and they kind of like doled me down. Um, whereas Tommy is like the most supportive of my career, my biggest fan. We like are a team and work together and um, he's just like roots for me more than anyone that I've been with and allows me to do my job and is like makes my life and my job better. So that like makes me feel so comfortable um, and makes me know that I don't need to be insecure and that he loves me a lot so yeah we both just have like a, a mutual respect for each other how am i supposed to trust men they are chronically damaged lie cheat and use us <laughs> i mean i definitely get that question y'all use us too you think yeah i kind of feel like most men go through a like phase in their life where they're like not most but i would say like most a lot of men go through phases in their life where they're not the best versions of themselves and they like allow, they're not mature or they're not confident or whatever it is. Like they're just like literally not capable of making good sound decisions and understanding like the repercussions of that and how they'll hurt people. It's like an immaturity thing. I think meeting guys once they've gone through that phase and once they've like fucked up, definitely like wouldn't date someone again i feel like who hasn't like learned their lesson or gone through that stage in their life where like they fucked up or they made like a bad choice or they were like not the best partner um okay i'm gonna translate what tommy said he basically said that like a lot of women when they're younger are ready to like settle down and be super serious be at the marriage level and a lot of guys are just trying to have fun and don't really know what that means or aren't literally are not capable of being at that point yet when like the woman is so it can lead to the expectations being different and lead to lying and um compromising the relationship because you're at different points you're at different stages the problem is just like because two people aren't on the exact same page self-comparison to an ex of your partner uh i'm confused about the question you're confused about the question yeah like me comparing myself to a partner like an ex-partner of yours how do you not compare yourself? <clears throat> Just don't. Yeah, I mean, that's never gonna happen. You're never gonna not. Do like, you do that as a guy? No, I think guys do it too. Yeah. I think it's pretty normal and natural to do that. The best advice that I can give you as someone who's also been through that is to realize that they're choosing you and they wanna be with you and not that other person. And also if you're stalking them on social media, I just wouldn't look. And if you're feeling really, really insecure about it or you're feeling like your partner is still talking to them or still has feelings for them, then you should just leave that person because they should be making you feel like really important and like the most important person in their life. Birth control. I am on birth control. Uh, I've never really been, <laughs> I've never really been off of birth control. I'm on low, low estrin birth control 
to put on it since high school so when did you get into horses and what made you get louie so i actually grew up on like quite a bit of land at my house and behind my house there's a big like a lot of fields and then behind those fields is a riding school and then there's actually like a horse behind my house there was like a horse in the woods behind my house so i took riding lessons um growing up just because it was like my neighbors and rode a lot growing up rode english and then i stopped when i started skiing seriously and then i got back into it i would say like fully got back into it during covid i leased a horse during covid with my sister and then when i left new york city i finally was like oh i also rode in la in malibu and i took a lot of really cool horsemanship classes in malibu that was really cool but uh, when I finally left the city, I was like, I can finally own a horse. Like, that's what I've always wanted, like, literally my whole life. Um, and I realized that I could finally do that. So um, I bought Louie from the barn that I was riding at. It's this, like, really laid-back western barn with a lot of trails near my house. So, so because I travel so much, like, the situation worked out perfectly. I actually bought the horse from the barn that I ride at. So the horse had been there for like 10 years and was used for trail rides and some lessons. He's like more of an advanced horse, but he was used by the barn. So I bought him from the barn. My trainer, my horse trainer, uh, has been like riding him forever. So she actually and some of the girls at the barn will ride him while I'm traveling. And my sister rides him. And then when I'm home, I get to see him and ride him. I ride him like whenever I'm home, obviously. But it's been so cold and miserable riding him in the winter, honestly. Like so excited for the spring and the summer to ride him more it's just like not that ideal to ride in the east coast in the winter i still do it but it's definitely like the rides are shorter and like not as fun but i just like love owning a horse and having that freedom to like do whatever i want with him and to ride him whenever i want and whatever works for my schedule and i also love that my sister can get to ride him bye guys bye guys <laughs> say bye